Today we're going to take a quick tour of the 2005 National Air Toxics website. Just in case you don't know how to get in there and can't remember the website, just go to the, your browser and type in www.epa.gov slash NADA2005. That'll take you right to the website itself. And you'll get the NADA front screen. It'll look something like this. On, on the right side, you'll notice these green kind of highlighted boxes here that highlight some of the newer special features of the NADA website, and we'll go through those one by one. But right here, you'll see um, some information on the website itself, how NADA was derived, what pollutants we actually included in the National Air Toxic Assessment. If you click on that, you get a nice listing of that. You might want to uh, blow that up to uh, uh, get a better view of that. As I mentioned, there's also information on a fact sheet, uh, which gives you the highlights of NADA itself as well as a summary of results, uh, which you can get quickly here. So if you need just quick information at a very high level, uh, it's right there on the first page of the NATO website. Also on the right side, you'll see, uh, like I mentioned, a cl some clicks to um, some maps that we put together for you. Uh, we have both cancer and non-cancer maps. We have two cancer maps here, one that shows the census tracts, the other one that shows where in the country we have our highest risks. We have same types of maps for our non-cancer risks or respiratory. And we also have a link to some maps that we have on the NATO website that feature Google Earth type maps, and I'll show you those in a few minutes or how to access those. So this is your front page. Uh, we also have another very important document linked right here on the front page, our technical methods document, which uh, for those who are inclined to find about, about all the details in NADA and what went into it and the nuts and bolts, uh, click on that technical methods document and you'll get a detailed assessment of what actually went into NADA. And we also have some resources from some other websites that are actually using NADA data. Um, some of our regional offices are actually using NADA as well as some of our partners in ORD and uh, others within EPA are, are using uh, the NADA data itself. So this is the front page on NADA. If you want to know a little bit more about the assessment, click on the left side about the assessment, and it'll outline step by step what uh, went into de developing this analysis. One of those important documents, as I mentioned, the technical methods document, here's another way to get to that. If you go to the left side, you'll see another pop-up for frequently asked questions. Probably one of the most important components uh, of, of the NATO website is, and these questions were developed from NATO users from the past that sent us questions, and we kind of tried to highlight those on our website. We've broken those down into general background questions and questions on the results themselves. So before you go and send us an email to figure out what's going on, please feel free to look through these questions and see if they'll answer what your question might be. We have additional details about the methods that go into NADA as well. Uh, you could click on those and get many more information on uh, what uh, went into the national assessment itself. This isn't quite the level that's in the technical methods document, but if you need something at a little higher level and it's a little quick, little easier to read, go to this section of the analysis. And probably the nuts and bolts of the analysis, since where I'm going to spend the majority of the time, is under our assessment results page. Under the results page, you'll notice these blue horizontal bars that go across the page broken up the page into three different sections. Uh, the first section is on emissions inventory. And as you scroll down, you'll see a section on county level model ambient concentrations and exposure and risk. And then if you go a little bit further down, you'll see a similar section on track level. And then finally, we have those Google Earth maps I had told you about earlier. Let's start at the very top of the page. Probably the most, one of the most important documents that seems to get overlooked by a lot of people is we have a README right at the top that explains what's on this page. If you want to know what units we have, what these different things and different tables represent, you go to this README, uh, you click on it, and I'll tell you uh, pretty much all the information you need to know about the data that you're looking at on the NATO website itself, on the results page itself. We've also added on a file that talks about known issues. As we go through and review the data, we find things that have been updated or changes. We'll make those available under this known issues a link right here at the top of the page. But let's get into the first section, which is the emissions inventory section of it. Keep in mind that we went through a series of 
a review with our state and local partners, and we received over 5,000 facility changes as a result of that. We summarized those changes in this file right here from our state partners. If you're going to use the National Air Toxic Assessment, keep in mind that the inventory we're using is not the NEI inventory. This is an inventory that was developed from the NEI and was updated for the NATO website as a result of this review period by the states and locals. Uh, <clears throat> we also have several files on documentation on the inventory itself here. You can read through those. If you want to get the actual data that went into the analysis itself, in the inventory, you can click on a particular state. It'll give you an option of either opening or saving a file. We recommend you save the file. These are zip type files that contain Microsoft Access databases in them. I'd recommend you save those files to your hard drive and you'll be able to uh, unzip them and use them at your leisure. Okay. We also have here, you'll notice another file, diesel particulate matter is not included in those files, so if diesel is what you're looking at, you can click on uh, the diesel summary file here, uh, which is a national file, and save that as well and get all the diesel particulate information that you might need. Keep in mind that if you're using the NATO website, it's a technical website, so much of our data is contained in either Microsoft Access or Microsoft Excel files, so you need to either have those installed on your computer or be familiar with those um, if you need, want to access the raw data in NATO itself. So that's the inventory section of the, of the website. If we go further down, I had mentioned the county level uh, files are then contained here. 3,000 somewhat counties nationwide, that, that data we were able to retain some of that in Microsoft Excel files, which are significantly smaller than the Access files. These are probably, the, right down here in the middle of the page, are probably the three most used files on the NATO website. We have a summary of cancer levels nationwide for NADA. If you look, you'll see that. And it'll give you um, county by county what the cancer risk is and what contributes to that cancer risk. Uh, we also have a similar file for respiratory and neurological on this website. Or if you are just interested in a particular pollutant, let's say you're interested in what the effects of uh, acrolein is, uh, you may click on and download the file that contains the acrolein file county by county nationwide. Similarly, if you're interested just in a particular geographic area like a state, you can click on the state file and download the state file, and that will contain all the information in these previous three files, all summarized for a particular uh, state that you might be interested in. As we go further down the website, you'll see another blue banner that talks about track level. A track is about 4,000 people. The size of a census track will vary from uh, location to location, depending on the population density in that area. But we've summarized the data for NADA in a census track format. Similar to what we had for the county, we now have for cancer, neurological, and respiratory as well here. We also have three additional files to help you drill down into the nuts and bolts of the data itself if you're interested in the non-point risks or what's going on on the on-road mobile, on mobile risk or non-road mobile risk. We have three additional files that will help you to get that information as well. That type of data, all these files, by the way, are in Microsoft Access format because of the larger size of these, we can't have these in Excel any, any longer. Similarly, as we have for the county, you can select a particular pollutant and download that pollutant, the database for that pollutant, save it to your hard drive and unzip it, or you can, once again, select a state and do that. Um, probably the easiest way to gain access to the NATA data is through the Google Earth type maps that we've developed. These are KMZ type uh, maps, and if you have Google Earth, already installed on your website. We have some instructions how to do it and make sure you uh, have uh, a licensed version and read the license for Google Earth on uh, Google's website. But once you have it installed, you can uh, actually launch Google Earth by just simply downloading the state that you're interested in. We'll download, uh, for instance, Maryland and look at it. Uh, save it to your hard drive. We'll get a, uh, a series of four different files. Why don't I do that for you real quick here? I'll, I'll open it up on mine so you can see what it looks like. You'll notice four different zip files that are contained within there. Simply click on any of these and it will launch Google Earth. There's four files, one that has the plant locations, 
uh, one for the neurological risk, one for the respiratory risk, and one for the cancer risks contained within this file. I've actually preloaded one of those on my um, Google Earth, uh, ready for you to see. And simply what you'll get is on the left side, under your places, you'll have two little pop-ups pop up, one that has the cancer risks and one that has the source locations. Those are two I've loaded here. And you can zoom down in on these. The level, as far as the colors here, are also in that README file I showed you at the top of the NATO website. But you can click on one of these uh, census tracts, and these little black lines represent census tracts. And you'll get a pop-up box that shows you information on the track itself, what the cancer risk is, what the sources of the cancer risk are, what pollutants are contributing to that cancer risk. All comes up in this little pop-up block, and you can click on any block and get similar information. Um, you'll notice these little pink bubbles also. These actually represent the emission points or the sources, point sources that went into NADA. And you can click on those and get further information on that point source itself, the pollutants that it's emitting. Uh, you'll also get an address and the name of the facility. And uh, also at the top you'll see an NEI ID. If you go back to the NADA website with that identification and go back to the top of the NADA webpage, um, by downloading that particular state, um, you'll be able to pull the information up on that and get all the stack parameters or whatever else you might want to uh, find out that we modeled for that facility itself. So that's the results page. We have a couple other options you can go into. Probably one of the most important is the limitations of the NATO website. Please review this and look at this before you use the data. It tells you what you should and shouldn't be doing with the data itself. It's important. We also have a page on air toxic reductions nationwide. What our air toxic uh, program is doing for industrial sources as well as mobile sources and indoor sources. Um, so you can get further information right off the NATO website on that. We also have an extensive glossary. So if there's a particular term that you might be interested in and don't know what the meaning is, you can click on the NATO glossary. It's an excellent reference. It's alphabetical, so you can find things pretty quickly. And um, that's about it on the NATO website.